And welcome into Cavalier Fields as we are halfway through this first inning with one out. We are late getting on the air because Mother Nature is being a bear here tonight. Good evening, everybody. Russell Deese along with John Cosader. It is the DSPN Sports Baseball Game of the Week. Tonight, it's a crosstown rival between the Mountain Sales Cavaliers as they host the Tattnall Square Trojans. Cavaliers come in 7-3, and three. Trojans come in 6-0, and oh. and I'm going to bring in uh, my broadcast partner now, John Cosader. John, uh, uh, nothing like a good rivalry, but it's about 23 degrees out here right now with a 30-mile-an-hour wind. Well, I'd say it's about 21 with a 35-mile-an-hour <laughs> wind. It is splitting hair, frosty son. cold out here tonight. All right, we're in the top of the first. Catch us up here real quick, John, as we're late coming on the air. All right, well, let's look at Tattnall Square coming out and swinging a bat. B.J. Spear reached by an error, and he moved to second. Miles Morse knocked him in. Brooks Gordon singled to make it first and third after a Traham ground out. And the, oh. Error on the shortstop. Yeah. Carter Fink singled in one, then Hunter Alexander singled in another one, and all of a sudden it's <laughs> four to nothing, and Dawson Brown reaches by air, so nothing's going right for the Cavaliers so far. Nothing's going right, and we're still in the top of the first with only one out, and we got runners on the corner, uh, bases loaded rather now. Four to nothing. I'm going to step away and help bring you this in full HD tonight. I'm going to go man a camera for a little while, and the man that's going to bring all the action to you, John Cosader, and John will be back in a little bit with to help you out. All righty, so we're going to we're going to look. The coach coming out, and looks like. We are still going to have Clay Murphy on the mound. Clay hasn't had any luck so far. He's had two ground ball outs, and the shortstop has not been able to handle them. So now we're going to number 30, Connor Toth. Connor, all of a sudden, looks like he has a chance to get some regular playing time. He's playing left field tonight for the first time this year, and he throws it out there to right field, and that's going to fall too. Another hit, and the right fielder bobbles it, and that's going to score two more runs. Connor Toth delivers, and it is quickly six to nothing. And right now, it seems like one team is okay being out here in the cold. And right now, Mount the Sales doesn't really look like they're very interested. And that was actually Caden Toth with the hit. So we're back to the top of the order in BJ Spear. B.J. has been a hitting machine this year. He's been on base 20 out of 24 times on the year, and he's hitting over 600 right now. He comes up with runners on first and third and only one out. Tattnall has six hits early in the game. There's only one out, and Tattnall has batted around. Clay Murphy gets a start. And ladies and gentlemen, if, if we're talking that it's bitter cold out there, we are not lying at all. It is bitterly cold out here. B.J. fouls it off, and he's behind one and two. Tattnall, 6-0 and coming in, and they have played some very good teams. They beat Savannah Christian on Saturday evening. Savannah Christian was undefeated coming in. And that's going to be a ground ball to third baseman. Third baseman fields and throws. That's going to score another run. That was Connor Toth coming home. So now the bases are empty. Nope, there's a runner on second still. And we're going to go back to Miles Morris. Miles Morris knocked in a run his first time up. Seven to nothing. Two Cavalier errors and six hits have cost them. Miles Morse Sr. Shortstop. The only good thing, the only really hopeful thing for Mount of Sales is Tatton Square is throwing their number three guy tonight, Bo Hatcher, and they will miss Brooks Gorman and Dawson Brown who have both been stellar so far this year. So yeah, it's warming up a little bit. Feeling good out here now. The wind is only gusting about 20 miles an hour right now. 
And um, yeah, it's what DSPN does. We wanna we wanna broadcast high school baseball, and, and Russell Deese does anything he can to get out here and do it. He could have easily said no tonight. We knew it was gonna be bitter cold, and I've got more layers of clothes on right now than maybe ever in my life. Two balls, one strike on Miles Morrison. Clay Murphy gonna deliver. And he's gonna look at a ball. Clay's having a lot of trouble with that hat. That hat's coming off every pitch. I don't know if it's the wind. I think it is. And in a minute or two, we're gonna try to get you another camera working. Right now we've got one behind home plate and that is all we are using. And the runner on third is going. And he's going to be out, and that's going to end the inning. So, Tattnall Square put seven on the board in the first inning. On six hits, they take advantage of two errors. We're going to take a quick break. Tattnall Square seven, Mount the Sales coming to bat. To be the best, you need the best in hydration and nutrition. You need Vitafuse Sport IV Nutrition. Hello, I'm Joy Johnson at the Cottages on Westland, inviting you to come see our spacious assisted living suites. Each suite has its own kitchenette, private bathroom, separate bedroom, and living space. We provide meals, housekeeping and laundry services, personal care assistance, and a variety of daily activities. Come by and visit us soon. You'll see why our residents feel at home and why families trust their loved ones to us at the Cottages on Westland. And welcome back to DSPN Sports with coverage of GHSA Class A Private School Baseball. And now Mount the Sales is going to come up and see what they can do with sophomore Bo Hatcher. Bo Hatcher, the number three guy at Tattnall Square. He's thrown one inning this year, and it was a shutout inning. And he'll face a lineup that looks like this. Landon Jernigan will lead it off. Still Bruce hitting in the second spot. Walker Schofield hitting third. Rossman Diaz hitting fourth. Micah Hathaway hitting fifth. Andrew Craddock, sixth, Clay Murphy, seventh, Kobe Butts, eighth, and Jackson Taylor will hit in the nine spot. And let's see if Bo Spear has any trouble out here. Bo Hatcher, excuse me. I don't know why I want to do that. And he starts off 2-0. and oh. Like I said, the first two guys are not going to pitch tonight for Tattnall. Tattnall has a busy week with games on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we'll get to see a lot of arms. And that's gonna be a 3-0 start on Landon Jernigan. Landon, the center fielder. And let's see if Mount Sales can get a few and get back into this game. And there's a strike and it's three and one. Bo Hatcher, a tall, lanky, in like pitcher for Tatlow, and that's going to be a line drive up the middle. The right fielder is going to take it and throw it back in, and Landon Jernigan starts it off with a clean hit. And that will bring up Steele Bruce. Steele is the fielder, and he's going to hit left-handed. So Mount the Sales has the leadoff runner on. Let's see if Landon Jernigan tries to make something happen. Tatnall Square, a very good catcher. 
in Trey Ham. He is a Lipscomb signee already. He's a senior. And that's ball one. So Bo Hatcher having a little issue finding the plate. And here comes the pitching coach for Tattnall Square. Like I stated, Tattnall Square has two solid starters. Gorman and Dawson Brown, that number three guy, remains to be seen. Head coach Joey Hiller says he's got three or four guys that are in competition for that third starter. You're always going to need at least three. Want to know the count on Steel Bruce? Nobody out here at the bottom of the first. Tattnall Square put seven on the board in the first inning. That's their biggest inning of the year. I don't think he was going to bunt. He just wanted to make Bo throw a strike, and he did. It's one and one. Now the wind has stopped for just a minute. It's not bad when the wind doesn't blow, but we have had a consistent wind. And Hatcher misses outside, and as I speak, that wind comes back. Still Bruce shows bunt, pulls back, and he's gonna go three and one. So Bo Hatcher is struggling. It's a tough thing to have to do your first start in high school, and it's it's probably 32 degrees out here, but the wind makes it feel so much colder. And he walks. Still Bruce, the two runners on from Mount the Sales with the meat of their order coming up. And this will be Walker Schofield. Runners on first and second, no out. And the Cavaliers threaten early. And there's a strike for Bo Hatcher. First time Bo's been ahead of a hitter so far. I would say this wind kind of feels like you're on a beach on a summer day and you get just a lot, a lot of wind and, and that's exactly what we have today. We got here and things were blowing all over the place. You put a notebook down, the notebook flew away. So it is a stiff wind. Good pitch there by Bo Hatcher, and he's ahead of Walker Schofield, 0-2. And, and he just misses outside, and it's 2-1. and one. Runners on first and second, they get good leads. And Walker steps out. And now he's back in for the one ball, two strike pitch. Goes sidearm and misses and it's even up. Two and two the count. I'm sure you can hear that wind. That wind is every bit accurate. And here's the 2-2, and that's fouled off. Walker is now battling. This is not a region game that counts. Both teams in region 7A, but this does not count on the schedule. That will come later in the season.
but it's still an important game trying to get a feel for where both teams are. Mountain Sales off to a good start, 7-3. and three. Tattnall Square, the defending GHSA Class A private school state champions. They went 34-4. and four. They lost four key starters. But so far, pitching has dominated for them. They've got kind of experimenting on the corners in the outfield. They've got the Toth Twins playing left field and right field today. And they've had a couple different combinations out there so far. And a good pitch by Walker. Very good pitch from Bo Hatcher for the strikeout. Trahan throws down to first base and he throws wildly. So that's gonna advance the runners to second and third. And here comes Rossman Diaz, the catcher. Coming up to the bat with two guys on and one out. Mount the sails trying to answer that Tattnall score seven run first inning. And it's fouled back straight back. Diaz had a good cut, looked like he was on it. And it's fun watching Brandon trying to get a little more clothes on. Our producer, he is, I can't even see his head, barely. It's poking out there a little bit. I've got that constant wind hitting me right in the right side of the face though. Breaking ball misses and it's one and one to Diaz. And it's fouled back again and Hatcher is ahead. And there's that beachy wind I don't know what else to call it. I haven't been all over the world. I'm saying it feels like you're on a beach, except it's 30 degrees. Yep. Brandon nods his head in agreement. Like you're on an Arctic cruise. <laughs> yes, an Arctic cruise, not making Georgia. Breaking ball, ground ball to the shortstop. Miles Morris picks it up, throws, and he's going to beat it. Base hit, Rossman Diaz. Infield hit, gonna score a run. Miles Morris did everything he could, but he couldn't get Diaz. And there's runners on first and third, and one out, and Tattnall Square is on the board. Excuse me, Mount the Sales is on the board. Seven to one, could be that kind of game. Just what we expected, the kind of game that's gonna keep us out here about three and a half hours probably. I don't know if I'll be able to talk in three and a half hours. I need one of those face masks that you wear when you rob a store. That would be the be the thing for right now. And this is gonna be Micah Hathaway. Hathaway is a well-known name in Mount Sales circles over the last 10 years. And this is the last one of them. Mike is playing right field and he has a chance to do some damage. First and third, one out. And that's a good breaking ball by Hatcher and he's ahead. Be interesting to see how many pitchers we might see in this game for Tattnall. I know we'll see two, wouldn't be surprised to see three or four. And Hatcher misses outside and Hathaway is even, one and one. And that's gonna be popped up straight back. And Bo Hatcher ahead. One ball, two strike, one out. It's seven to one, Tattnall. Yeah. 
And Hatcher fakes the third in first. And now he'll step up for the one-two pitch. Hold it, hold it. Great breaking ball, Bo Hatcher. Fools hat away and there's two outs. Patrick can pitch out of this inning. Brooks Gorman picks it up, throws to first, and he's got him. So Tattnall Square pitches out of a little trouble, but Mountain Sales managed one. We've played one full inning. It's Tattnall Square seven. Mountain one. We're on the DSPN network. We'll be right back. How do you say, my attorney met with me personally? Thanks, Lester. Thanks, Lester. How do you say, I got the compensation I deserve? Thanks, Lester. Thanks, Thanks Lester. Lester. How do you say, I won my court case? Thanks, Lester. Shisha, Lester. Thanks, Lester. You're a good man. I am Lester Miller, and I will get you the compensation you deserve. Thanks, Lester. Wheezing, itching, runny nose and coughing, all these symptoms can be caused by allergies, which are very common in Middle Georgia. Airborne allergens can make it difficult to enjoy life around here, like tailgating or attending a ball game. Even that seasonal cold might be due to allergies. Give us a chance to fix that. It's what we do. With multiple locations in and around Macon, we help children and adults with allergies and asthma. We want to be your Middle Georgia allergy team. Welcome back to DSPN coverage of high school sports. We are here on a frigid March night at Mount DeSales Academy and Tattnall Square coming up for the second inning. They'll have the two, three, four hitters, Miles Morris, Brooks Gorman, and Trey Ham coming up. Seven to one. Tattnall Square, six hits in the first inning off of Clay Murphy, but two errors really hurt. One of them was a double play ball, and they couldn't turn it. And head coach Joey Hiller wants a word with the home plate umpire. And not sure what he's talking about. And now the home plate umpire is going to go talk to the first base umpire. And I don't know what this could be about. The first hitter. Okay, what they're saying is I know what the issue is now. Miles Morris was up to bat to when the last inning ended. But Caden Toth got thrown out at third base. So Miles Morris was credited with a walk. And the inning ended on Toth getting thrown out at third base. So it's not Miles Morris. Miles Morris walked last inning. It's Brooks Gorman, Trey Ham, and Carter Fink. Brooks Gorman hitting close to 500. Been very consistent. But if you want to see a guy pitch, you got to see this guy pitch. He is dominating. Got a 0 0.50 ERA so far, and he plays third base when he's not pitching. He's also one of Tattnall's best hitters. And it's quickly 2 0. Oh. And there's a strike from Clay Murphy. And if you watch Murphy, he honestly picks his cap up almost every single pitch.
And that's going to be fouled back, and Murphy's battled back to be even at two and two. Excuse me, had to pose for a selfie. And that's going to be ball three, three and two. It's not bad out here when the wind doesn't blow, but the wind is blowing pretty consistently. I see a heater over there. Wondering why Russell Deese didn't bring us a heater. Russell's hanging out in the outfield somewhere. He's <laughs> Russell's probably in the car right now. And the full count pitch was high, and Brick Scorman is on with a walk. And here comes Trey Ham. Trey's the four hitter. Trey has struggled this year. He's batting 200 right now. And watch out when he busts out. Now, I will tell you, the wind is kind of blowing out. If somebody gets it up in this air, this ball is going to go. Let's see who the first one is to do that. Just missed it. That's on the fence. Trey Ham didn't hit that ball very well, but it's a deep fly out to left center. Man, oh, man, I almost called it. That would have been great if I could have called it. But Trey couldn't quite get it out of here, and that brings up Carter Fink. One out. And we're in the top of the second. Carter's a sophomore. He's the brother of Logan Fink three-year starter for Tatnell, who now plays at Kennesaw State. And that's a base hit for Carter Fink. Carter Fink's got two hits today, and it's first and second. For Tatnell Square with Hunter Alexander, the first baseman, coming up. And sometimes if you talk about heat, good things just happen. As long as she doesn't have to plug that thing up anywhere. Oh, doesn't look like you have to plug that heater up, do you? All right, that's even better. Don't let that blow up in your face, Brandon. All right, we're going to have a little heater going on here. And that's ball two to Hunter Alexander. Hunter Alexander probably going to be the starting quarterback on the Tattnall Square football team. And for right now, he's won the first base job. And that's the ground ball to the shortstop. Fields it. Could not come up with it. And Jackson Taylor having a tough game with his third error of the game, and that's going to load him up. For Dawson Brown. Dawson Brown's already signed with Georgia Tech to pitch. He is the son of Kevin Brown, who is on the Tatnall coaching staff. Bases loaded, one out. Tattnall Square threatens again. And that's going to be a pop-up. Don't know how deep it is. They may try to score it. Shortstop goes out and catches it. Throws home, and that's going to be the second out. Good job of pitching by Clay Murphy. And he is one out from escaping this second inning. So Dawson Brown pops up, and that's going to bring up Connor Toth. And we're one out away from Mount the Sales getting out of the top of the second. Almost hits Connor. Connor going to get a chance to play on a regular basis right now. He started the season on the bench. 
But now he's playing left field. Good curve ball that Toth couldn't handle, and it's one and one. Good pitch, Clay Murphy. Nice job, Rossman Diaz behind the plate, blocking that pitch. And Connor Toth fouls it straight back. Good pitch just missed, and it's two and two. I'm not sure they're going to catch me on fire over here or not. <laughs> and Clay Murphy wanted that pitch, just missed with the curveball. And it's full count. So bases loaded, full count, two outs, top of the second. And Connor fouls it off. And Clay Murphy loses Connor Toth, and that's going to score another run. As Brooks Gorman comes in, and it's eight to one. And this is Caden Toth. Not sure where they're getting Tooth from. They're announcing him as Tooth. It's Toth for sure. And he bats with the bases loaded. And Clay Murphy not liking the strike zone a whole lot right now. getting kind of toasty. I'm going to have to <laughs> take some clothes off. We've got a little heater here now. I've never loved my real boss more than right now. And that's a good pitch by Clay Murphy, and it's one and one. And Caden fouls it straight back, and it's one ball, two strikes. Yes, and that was outside, making it two and two. Bases loaded for Tattnall Square to the number nine hitter, Caden Toth, trying to do more damage. And that runs it full. This is what Tattnall does. They make pitchers work for outs. Don't swing in a whole lot of bad pitches. And all the runners will be moving again. And that hits Caden Toth to score another run. And head coach Bubba Poole on the way to the mound. And this could be the end of the night for Clay Murphy. And it looks like Coach Poole's just going to talk to him, try to settle him down. He's still in the game. And that brings up B.J. Spears.
And that's ball one to him. Tad in the square, eight hits already. And there's a strike and it's one and one. Ground ball to third base, third baseman knocks it down, tags third, so they're out of the inning. Tattnall Square manages two more runs. We've played an inning and a half and it's nine to one. We're on a DSPN Sports Network and we'll be right back. Macon Boots is the newest addition to Midtown Macon. With brands like Rocky, Ariette, Georgia Boots, and more, Macon Boots can help you find the boots you're looking for with unbeatable prices. Whether it's boots for work, everyday wear, or maybe boots are just your thing, we have a whole selection from America, Canada, and Australia. While you're here, make sure to check out our authentic belt buckles, handmade knives, genuine leather wallets, and much more that you can only find at Macon Boots. We fit Macon. Crosby Roofing is more than just a roofing company. It's a family-owned company with deep roots in Middle Georgia. Since 1989, Crosby Roofing has been the source of quality roofing in Middle Georgia. Inspections and estimates are always free, commercial or residential. No job is too big or too small. You can trust Crosby Roofing for a clean job site, no upfront fees, and a lifetime warranty on shingles. Discounts for senior citizens. Crosby Roofing, quality you can look up to. All right, welcome back to DSPN Sports. Here we are, braving the cold weather at Mount DeSales Academy. It's nine to one, bottom of the second. And Mount DeSales will lead off with Clay Murphy, Kobe Butson, Jackson Taylor. Against Bo Hatcher, Bo's not really feeling that ball a whole lot. I don't know if there were any talks about canceling this game or not. It is frigid out here, and the wind does not make it any better. And Bo Hatcher goes 2-0. Tattnall Square pitcher is kind of known for throwing a lot of strikes. But you can't really blame this young sophomore, and you certainly can't blame Clay Murphy. It, it is a tough pitching day for sure. And Clay Murphy goes 3-0. And there's a strike, and it's three and one. And that's going to be a foul ball down the right field line. And Hatcher is even the count. The 3-2 pitch to Murphy. And that's going to be a walk. Hatcher's now walked two. And that brings up Kobe Butts. I'm not sure we're not going to burn to death out here. That wind blows, and this fire on this kerosene heater just kind of flares up. You hear me screaming, my legs on fire. Kobe Butts, the third baseman, comes to bat. Runner on first, nobody out. And 
And we have played an hour of baseball, and we are in the second inning. And the first pitch is going to be a little high. And once again, Bo Hatcher struggling with that strike zone. And that's going to be a little pop-up. Nobody can get to it, and it counts even at 1-1. One one. Other than the cold, it's a beautiful night. Not really a cloud in the sky, just a lot of wind. And DSBN is very happy to be able to bring you this game. Hopefully you're watching in the warmth of your house. Drinking a cup of hot chocolate and just enjoying baseball. And that's going to be another foul ball. That one's straight back, and it's two and two. No, excuse me, one ball, two strikes. <laughs> And Hatcher misses outside, and it's two and two. We've got three pairs of pants on, four shirts, three pairs of socks, and I'm still cold. And that's going to be a strikeout. Kobe Butts strikes out looking, and there's one out. And that breaks up Jackson Taylor. And Jackson Taylor sporting, I don't know what he's got over his face. Um, he's got something over his face. He's a masked man. He couldn't go into a bank right now, that's for sure. But I'm trying to get a better look at it. Okay, it's over his face. It's over his nose. It's over his mouth. You can see his eyes poking out. That's about it. Jackson Taylor. And he's squaring the bunt and pulls back and wants to swing. And that's foul back. So in two, Jackson Taylor suffered a fractured leg during football season. It was a very, very bad fracture. And he is just now rounded in the form. He's not allowed to pitch yet. He would have been the ace on this staff. And he is not yet pitching, but he is playing shortstop. He's only been back about two weeks and just rounding in the form, and he goes down swinging. And there's two out. We're going to go to the top of the Mount of Sales lineup with Landon Jernigan. Landon singled his first time up, having to rely on my brain tonight to remember what these kids did when they're up. I know Landon got a hit. I'm not keeping a scorebook. My hands are staying in these big thick gloves. And I'm going to see if maybe I can borrow that thing from Jackson Taylor to get over my face. And Hatcher misses. And it's one and one. And that's a ball outside. And Hatcher goes two and one to Landon Jernigan, the center fielder. And he's outside again. Two outs, bottom of the second, Tattnall Square, nine to one over Mount of Sales. And that's going to be a walk, and two runners on now for Steel Bruce. Surprisingly, they're there are some people here. Not a bad crowd. 
for the weather. And they're over there playing soccer too. But those soccer kids, you know, they just stay warm. They're running up and down that field. They, they don't get cold. They get warm and then it's fine. Baseball's a little different. A lot of standing around. And for our sake, there's a lot of sitting around. And I don't know if I've mentioned it lately, but it's cold. And that's a fly ball to center field. B.J. Spear is under it, so Bo Hatcher gets him out in the second inning. We've played two now. It's Tattnall Square 9, Mount the Sales 1. We'll be back for the third inning on a DSPN network in just a minute. I am Lester Miller, and if you've been in an accident or hurt on the job, I want to work for you. My office is right across the street from the Bibb County Courthouse, and it doesn't end there. Middle Georgia is my home. I graduated from high school here, college, and Mercer Law School. My family goes to church here. My kids go to school here. I work hard for my community, and when you need an attorney, I will personally take your call. Thanks, Lester. And I will work hard for you, too. Contact Lester Miller today for your free consultation. Wheezing, itching, runny nose and coughing, all these symptoms can be caused by allergies, which are very common in Middle Georgia. Airborne allergens can make it difficult to enjoy life around here, like tailgating or attending a ball game. Even that seasonal cold might be due to allergies. Give us a chance to fix that. It's what we do. With multiple locations in and around Macon, we help children and adults with allergies and asthma. We've teamed with Mercer, and we'd be happy to team with you. Go Bears! All right, welcome back on DSPN Sports Network. This is John Cosader, and we are live here from Mount Sales Academy. And I'm not going to mention it's cold right now. It's not really that cold. These kids don't seem like they're cold. Tattnall Square going to start it off with Miles Moore. And we have a new pitcher. It looks like it's Cade West on the mound now. And we'll see how he can do. Miles Morris. Brooks Gorman and Trey Ham ready to go to work for Tattnall. Yeah, I don't know what it is. That thing just kicked up or something. It, it, we're talking about the heater, the savior. And Cade Moore goes to work. Excuse me, Cade West. I apologize for that. Cade West now on the mound. And we almost lost our camera. And no swing, and it's one and one. And that's another strike. And Cade West finding the plate. One ball, two strikes on Miles Morris. He's a senior. Quarterback on the football team, guard on the basketball team, and now the shortstop on the baseball team. And he will be going to college at Samford as a preferred walk-on in football. And that's two and two to Miles. And there's one of those 35 mile an hour gusts right to the face. And that's a line drive, Miles Morris. That's going to be trouble into the corner. Let's see if he's going to go two. He is. Left fielder gets up, but he's going to get to second standing up. Miles Morris leads it off with a double. Excellent. Miles has done that all year long. Very consistent. Last year he was a starter most of the time. He played all over the baseball field. 
And this is Brooks Gorman. Nobody out, a runner on second. It's not even a night that you could really have a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate because you couldn't hold it. The wind is so terrible. And that's one and one. And the pitch. Fly ball to left center field. Let's see if it has carry. It does. Oh, and the left fielder, let's call it the left fielder, it hit off the glove. That was still Bruce. It hit off the glove on the fence, and it bounced out of his glove, and Brooks Gorman is going yard right here. Brooks Gorman at I'm not sure if you call that a home run or a three or a four base error. We'll leave that to someone who knows more than I do. Regardless, Brooks Gorman drove it to the opposite field. This is the catcher, Trey Ham. And it gives Tattnall two more runs, and that brings up Trey Ham. And there's our 35 mile an hour wins again. We need a wind monitor out here. Can somebody get us one of those? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking 30 to 35. And this brings up Trey Ham. Trey flew out deep last time up. And the worst thing that happens is when the heater blows out. And you can feel it when it blows out now. And Cade West misses with the breaking ball, and it's two and one. And it's 11 to one right now. And Ham swings and fouls it off, and it's two and two. And just outside, and it's a full count. Nobody out here in the top of the third. Okay, we're getting our wind gauge out now. And that's a foul ball. It's going to get out of here. And somebody dares to put their hand out to catch that baseball. They are braver than I am right there. Oh, it says, yeah, we look it up. It says 12 mile an hour winds right now are expected. Well, I got news for you. This is more than 12, and it's more than 15. And that's going to be a base hit for Trey Ham between short and third. And Tattnall Square continues to do damage offensively. Next up, the designated hitter, Carter Fink. And that brings up Carter Fink. Carter Fink, two for two. He only had one hit coming into this game. That was a grand slam. But he's added two more tonight. And Carter, another one of those young kids, getting a lot of playing time right now. And not sure what's going on in right field. But the right fielder, Micah Hathaway, is running off of the field. Not sure what happened. Whether he got something in his eye, something blue in his eye maybe.
it's that kind of night, no doubt about it. Carter Fink. Up to bat, Hunter Alexander following, and Dawson Brown coming after that. And Hadaway is on his way back to the outfield. The home plate umpires back to home plate. And we're going to have pitch thrown in about 30 seconds or so. And there's that nice little breeze. But my feet are feeling okay right now. I'm not going to lie. And there's no outs. Top of the third, runner on first. Tatlow scored twice already. And that's a ground ball to third base. Kobe fields it, throws to first. And gets Carter Fink at first base. And now Joey Hiller is going to come out and ask the umpire whether he pulled his foot. And the uh, field umpire is going to go to the home plate umpire and ask him. We had a pretty good view, and I don't really think he did, but let's see what the camera says. And they talk about it for a while, and they're still talking about it. Those guys are not cold. That's obvious. If they were cold, they wouldn't still be talking about it. And he is out. Next up, the first baseman, Hunter Alexander. That brings up Hunter Alexander, runner on second. And one out. Not so sure what took so long to make that call. Runner on second, one out. And that breaking ball is going to miss. One out. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to say what just happened. And that's a ground ball to third. Nice play. Nice throw. And that's Kobe Butts with the second ground ball in a row, and he handles it. So that's two outs for Dawson Brown. Cade West doing a nice job here. And good pitch, Cade West, strike one. He just missed low, and Dawson lets it go, and it's one and one. That's a good picture right there. Excellent quality from DSB in sports, as always. And another good pitch gets Dawson Brown fishing, and it's one and two. And I thought Russell had gone to the car. He's giving us some good stuff. And we're two and two. There is nothing fast going on in this baseball game right now. Except Tatnell's put up 11 runs. And now Dawson's even. Full count, three and two. Two outs, runner on second. Tatnell trying to add to an 11 to one lead. Ground ball to third base. Kobe Butts fields again, throws, and that's going to be an error. I'm going to give that error. I would say it's the first baseman. Looked like a pretty good throw. He couldn't handle it. 
And that's going to score the 12th and end of the game for Tattnall Square. And the runner takes second on the throw, and that'll bring up Connor Toth. Next up the left fielder, Connor Toth. So Caden, Cade West was out of the inning, but his defense let him down. And that's going to be a pop-up. Kobe Butts runs after it. Not quite enough room. And Connor Toth is down 0-1. And that's going to be a base hit. Gets by the shortstop, and that's going to score another tap. And the run, Dawson Brown comes in to score. Connor Toth, the clean hit, and it's 13 to 1. Next up, the right fielder, Caden Toth. And that brings up Caden Toth. Yes, they are twins. And let's see what Caden can do. One another count, Caden Toth. Basketball player also, as are many of these athletes out here. And that's going to be a strike, and that evens the count at one and one. As I stated before, this is not a region counting game. And another good pitch, and Caden's down one and two. And it's now two and two. Hadn't been any quick at bats this game. Every at bat is just a grind for a DeSales pitching. I think DeSales is missing one of their better players tonight because he's sick. And that's a little squiver back to the pitcher. He throws the, throws the first in. That's going to be the last out of the inning. Tatton Square adds four more. It's 13 to 1 now. Mount DeSales coming up to bat. In the bottom of the third, we're on the DSPN network, and we'll be right back. Crosby Roofing is more than just a roofing company. It's a family-owned company with deep roots in middle Georgia. Since 1989, Crosby Roofing has been the source of quality roofing in middle Georgia. Inspections and estimates are always free, commercial or residential. No job is too big or too small. You can trust Crosby Roofing for a clean job site, no upfront fees, and a lifetime warranty on shingles. Discounts for senior citizens. Crosby Roofing, quality you can look up to. Before you put your company logo or event name on the streets, say it with authority, Apparel Authority. Now at a new location off Eisenhower Parkway across from Lowe's. Shirts, hats, cups, pens, patches, we put your logo on almost anything. Our team provides quality craftsmanship and custom embroidery, and our screen printing will turn your design into wearable works of art. Call or stop by in person for a quote. Apparel Authority, now at a new location off Eisenhower Parkway across from Lowe's.
All right, welcome back. We're in the bottom of the third on the DSPN network in Russell East. My boss on the DSPN network has come over here to catch a little heat from this beautiful heater. And, and he is a happy man for about three minutes and then we have to tell him to go. Clay Murphy leading it off against Bo Hatcher. And Bo misses outside. Bo's battled. Hadn't been extremely sharp, but he has battled. And I wouldn't be surprised if this was his last inning. And that's a strike. I know Coach Joey Hiller wants to see Hunter Alexander tonight. Pretty much can guarantee Tattnall's going to throw Brooks Gorman on Thursday. Not sure who will throw Friday. He plays Twigs. And that's a ground ball to third base. Brooks Gorman picks it up and throws him out. A rare quick out right there. Only three pitches thrown, and that brings up Kobe Butts. Excuse me, no it doesn't. I am all messed up in the lineup. That was that was Walker Schofield right there, and this is Rosamond Diaz. So sorry, I missed my place. I misread a number, but now we're straight. This is Rosamond Diaz, the catcher and the cleanup hitter. And that's fouled off. Mount the Sales, a much better team than they've played tonight. They're seven and three on the year. Tattle's a very good baseball team, but they'll have some good battles through the season. That's gonna be a pop up to the second baseman and Dawson Brown handles it. And that's two quick outs. And that'll bring up Micah Hathaway. Haven't had a quick inning at all today. So if Bo Hatcher can get out of this third, we will actually have a quick inning. <coughs> quick innings are my friend right now. That is fine with me. Ground ball to shortstop. Miles Morris bobbles, and he's not going to be able to get him. That's going to be an E6 on Miles. And Hathaway is on first. We almost had that quick inning as that was the first pitch. And that brings up Andrew Craddock. This is one of those nights that you're gonna go home and you're gonna be cold for about two hours no matter what you do when you get home. The feet aren't cold anymore, but the upper body is. And as I say that, the heater goes out. Good pitch, Bo Hatcher. This is Cade West right now hitting. His first at bat. And that's a line drive to shortstop, and it eats Miles Morris up. And you're going to have to give that another error on Miles Morris. Miles Morris, steady fielder. He's feeling this cold a little bit, too. Second error of the inning. And that brings up Clay Murphy. That's a difficult play, bad hop. But Miles will tell you he should make that play. And Clay Murphy has the chance to do some damage. And Hatcher's up high with the first delivery. Mount the sales coach by Bubba Pool. He's done a great job over here. Got the Cavaliers to the playoffs a couple years. Had some very good baseball teams over the last five years.
And that's fouled straight off. Good cut by Clay Murphy. Kobe Butts is on deck. And that's a curve ball that didn't spin, and it's two and two. Seriously, I do not know what I would be doing right now without that heater. <laughs> um, it has been a savior. Fly ball to center field, probably going to be a shortstop play. Miles Morris, he dropped it. Miles Morse could not handle it. I'm sure Joey Hiller is going to wonder why nobody in the outfield called him off. And that's going to drop. You probably have to give that a hit. I would think that was a hit. And Mount the Sale scores a run, and it's 13-2. And Kobe Butts coming up to the plate. He's the third baseman. He's had a pretty good game over there. And Mount the Sales. First and second and two outs. And remember a few minutes ago I said, oh, it looks like we could get our first inning, first quick inning, and now Mount the Sales has a chance to cut into the lead even further. Beautiful complex out here on a cool night. I can't wait till May, or at least April, mid-April. We should be out of this cold weather. I thought we were out of it two weeks ago. Or maybe, maybe by Friday we'll probably be out of it. And maybe that'll be the end of it. I don't remember a football game this cold. And the thing about it, you know, when DSPN works football games, we're in a press box. We are not in a press box tonight. We are outside. And now Bo Hatcher goes 3-0, and they could load the bases up for Jackson Taylor. I know Joey Hiller and Tattnall Square with this lead. They want to get out of here as quick as they can, enjoy the win, and get right back to it. They've got a busy week. And there's a strike by Bo Hatcher. And there's another strike. Good job of coming back by Hatcher, and it's full. Three and two, two outs, first and second. And that's going to fall, I believe. That's in no man's land, and that falls. A big throw for third base, and he's going to make it. So Kobe Butts. Drives in Cade West. A little blooper over the shortstop's head. No chance for Miles Morris on that. And Mount the Sales scores again. And this is Gordon Smith coming up to bat. He will pinch hit for Jackson Taylor. First and second, still two outs. Good pitch, Bo Hatcher, for strike one. Slow ground ball to shortstop. Miles Morse picks it up and does not have a play. And they're calling that. see what we're doing that's a foul ball off of his foot as off of Gordon Smith's foot and on the replay you could definitely see it go off his foot and it's no balls and two strikes And 
Catcher just missed high. One ball, two strikes, two outs. On the bottom of the third, it's 13 to three, Mount the Sales. Excuse me, 13 to three, Tattnall Square. The cold is starting to get to me. Nice pitch, Bo Hatcher goes sidearm for the strikeout. So we have played three innings. Tattnall Square leads 13 to three as Mount DeSales scores twice. From the DSBN network, we'll be right back. Hey folks, Russell from Gridiron Game of the Week. When you get ready to buy a new car or a newer automobile, there's always the dilemma of what to do with your current car. Well, that's where You Park and You Sell them at 3306 Vineville Avenue comes in. You Park and You Sell them is the original automobile dealership with the owner in mind. For 18 years, You Park and You Sell them has been the only alternative to giving your car to a local dealer on a trade-in or trying to market your car yourself. So when you get ready to sell your old car, give them a call today at 254-6310. That's You Park them, You Sell them, 33. Avenue. Planning on a holiday party with friends, family, or co-workers? Texas Border Grill's private banquet room offers seating from 5 to 55. Lunch to dinner seven days a week. Featuring an amazing menu with aged beef, seafood, and so many other signature dishes. Texas Border Grill. Welcome back. I'm John Cosader along with Russell Deese. And we are live here at Mount the Sales Academy for cold weather baseball. We've played three innings, and it's 13 to 3 in Tattnall Square. We'll have the top of the order up. BJ Spear. BJ doesn't really like the cold. He hasn't done a whole lot. And let's see what he can do this time. Against, it's the same pitcher, Cade West. Um, back out there for his second inning. Could have been a much better inning for Mount the Sales. Last inning, but they had a fly ball pop out of a glove and go over the fence. And that evens the count at one and one on BJ Spear. BJ came in hitting over 600. And he has not had a hit in this game so far. Been on base once. And now that I bring it up, there's a B.J. Spears single to left field. And the leadoff hitter for Tattnall is on, and that brings up Miles Morris. 13 to 3. And Miles Morris, and he'll be followed by Brooks Gorman. Two, three, four hitters. These are the guys that have done most of the damage this year. For Tattnall Square. Throw back the first. Don't know if BJ will be going right now. And and Cade West misses with the ball to start the count. And that's a fly ball to right field. Hathaway is there. And Miles Morris is retired for the first time of the night. Got to bring up Brooks Gorman. Gorman hit a deep fly ball to left field. And left fielder. Steel Bruce was there right against the fence. And it ended up popping out of his glove and going over the fence. Unfortunate break. Brooks Gorman will take it, though. And we're one out. B.J. Spears on first. Oh, 
And nice breaking ball by Cade West. And it's 0-1. And another strike on a slow breaking ball. Tricky pitch right there. And it's 0-2 on Brooks Gorman, the number three hitter in the tat in the order. And he missed with that. MBJ is going to take second. Got through Diaz that time. And BJ Spear moves up a base. And West misses with a curveball, and it's two and two. Trey Ham on deck. And that's a lazy fly ball in the left field. And that's going to drop. And that's going to be a run scoring double. Little blooper down the left field line finds the line in front of Steele Bruce. And that's a double for Brooks Gorman, and he scores BJ Spears. 14 to 3. You start thinking about run rules, and we're not sure. We think it's 15 after 3. Excuse me, 15 after 4. So Tatton would have to score some more runs. And Trey Ham at bat. Trey's got one homer on the year. And that's a strike, and Trey Ham didn't think much of that call. But he's going to step back in. The wind has died down just a bit. Not quite blowing like it was. It's still cold, though. In front of you, in front of you. No runner, no runner. Three! And Brooks Gorman going to move to third. And it's one and one. Ball's in the dirt. Diaz did a good job of blocking it. Couldn't find it for a minute. And Gorman hesitated, but then took off and ends up on third. And another strike on Trey Ham. Trey's got in the habit of wanting to pull everything early in the year. Joey Hiller's trying to get him to go into that right center field gap. And that is a shot to center field, but it's going to be caught by Landon Jernigan. Trey Ham's going to get a sacrifice fly, he scores Brooks Gorman, and it's 15 to 3. And that'll bring up Miles Morris. Trey Ham does his job, scores that run from third base. And this is going to be Carter Fink. Two outs, we're in the top of the fourth. Tattnall scored seven in the first, two in the second, four in the third, and they've added two more right here. And the first baseman's going to have room for that, so Fink pops up to the first baseman. 
Tattnall Square adds two in the fourth. We're on a DSBN network. We'll be back for the bottom of the fourth in just a minute. Is your house having a midlife crisis? Maybe it's time for a nip and tuck. Cherokee Brick has been transforming interiors and exteriors for over 100 years. Where you see a blank wall or old porch, we see potential. Add warmth and elegance to your home with an updated entryway, porch, or kitchen. At Cherokee Brick, we cut out the middleman and provide a robust selection of colors and sizes to fit your brick needs. Visit us online to find out more about where you can purchase Cherokee Brick, straight from the manufacturer. To be the best, you need the best in hydration and nutrition. You need Vitafuse Sport IV Nutrition. All right, welcome back. John Kosetter here on the DSBN network and Mount the Sales has got some work to do. They're down 12 runs in the bottom of the fourth and they have the top of their order in. Bo Hatcher still in there. Was not sure if he would come out for this inning, but it looks like he has. I gotta get a number. I'm pretty sure that's still Bo. And he'll face the top of the order in Landon Jernigan. And that's ball one. High fly ball. That's going to stay in play. Brooks Gorman dropped it. So Gorman had a play that he'd probably made 99 out of 100 times. He couldn't handle it tonight. But it's a foul ball. Landon Jernigan's still alive, and it's one and one. Not going to see a Tattnall Square team do that too often. And that's ball two. Landon Jernigan going to head in the count. And that's ball three, three and one. Bottom of the fourth here. And Bo Hatcher going to walk the leadoff hitter. And that's going to bring up Steel Bruce. And let's see what Mount the Sales can do this inning. It's only been one scoreless inning. That was a Mount the Sales second. And that's a good fastball. And two good pitches by Bo Hatcher, and he's quickly ahead, 0-2. Right Ground ball to the pitcher. Hatcher throws to second, one out, and he couldn't get the runner at first, but they got the lead runner. And there's one out and a runner on first. And that'll bring up Walker Schofield. It's funny the things you think about when you're this cold. If an Apple phone gets hot, 
it doesn't work anymore. I wonder if it gets cold if it doesn't work anymore. Technically, the colder the better, but then at a certain point, it gets Okay. Cold. Okay. So, if I go home and my iPhone doesn't work, I'll charge Russell Dees for it. <laughs> or he'll, he'll just take it out of my paycheck. 101 to count. Bo Hatcher's done a pretty good job. He's given up five hits in three and a third innings. But just can't really say a whole lot about any of the pitching. It's tough. These kids are having trouble gripping the ball probably. So I just commend anyone out there trying to pitch. It's hard enough playing somewhere else. But, you know, it's all about the grip of the ball when you're a pitcher. When, when it's this cold, it's tough to grip. Walker Schofield, the batter. And a good pitch, and it's two and two. We are not sure of the run rule, unfortunately. It could be 12 to four, 12 after four, but we are honestly not sure it's at 12 right now. And Walker's going to strike out. Good pitch. And here comes the pitching coach to have a word with Bo Hatcher. And I think that is going to be it for Bo Hatcher. I am sure he was on a pitch count. And let's get a number on this guy coming in. Looks like number 17. May, oh, yeah. Brandon says, look on the screen. And it's going to be number 17, who is not in the game right now. Oh, yes, it is. This is. If this is number 17 that went to the mound, this is Carter Fink. Making his first appearance of the year. So Bo Hatcher does a good job. We're going to take a quick break here. We're at DSBN Network, and we'll be right back when the play continues. How do you say, my attorney met with me personally? Thanks, Lester. Thanks, Lester. How do you say, I got the compensation I deserve? Thanks, Lester. Thanks, Thanks Lester. Lester. How do you say, I won my court case? Thanks, Lester. Shit, shit, Lester. Thanks, Lester. You're a good man. I am Lester Miller, and I will get you the compensation you deserve. Thanks, Lester. He ain't afraid of no one. Wheezing, itching, runny nose, and coughing. All these symptoms can be caused by allergies, which are very common in Middle Georgia. Airborne allergens can make it difficult to enjoy life around here, like tailgating or attending a ball game. Even that seasonal cold might be due to allergies. Give us a chance to fix that. It's what we do. With multiple locations in and around Macon, we help children and adults with allergies and asthma. We want to be your Middle Georgia allergy team. All right, welcome back. Here we are. Carter Fink on the mound. Now he takes over. After Bo Hatcher goes three and two thirds, there's a runner on first. And that's a high fly ball to the right field. But that's going to be Caden Toth, and he's under it. Nice job, Carter Fink. And that's going to end the fourth inning so that 12 after four wasn't happening. So, we've played four full innings on the DSPN network. It's Tattnall Square 15, Mount the Sales 3. Macon Boots is the newest addition to Midtown Macon. With brands like Rocky, Ariette, Georgia Boots, and more, Macon Boots can help you find the boots you're looking for with unbeatable prices. Whether it's boots for work, everyday wear, or maybe boots are just your thing, we have a whole selection from America, Canada, and Australia. 
While you're here, make sure to check out our authentic belt buckles, handmade knives, genuine leather wallets, and much more that you can only find at Macon Boots. We fit Macon. Crosby Roofing is more than just a roofing company. It's a family-owned company with deep roots in Middle Georgia. Since 1989, Crosby Roofing has been the source of quality roofing in Middle Georgia. Inspections and estimates are always free, commercial or residential. No job is too big or too small. You can trust Crosby Roofing for a clean job site, no upfront fees, and a lifetime warranty on shingles. Discounts for senior citizens. Crosby Roofing, quality you can look up to. And welcome back, Russell Deese with you as John takes a respite for a moment. We go to the top of the fifth. Trojans lead at 15 to three. Cade West on the mound for the Cavaliers. Strike right down the middle, belt high. No balls and a strike here. Two strikes as Cade West gets ahead of the batter. And he strikes him out. And the Trojans start to empty the bench. As we have another hitter in. Cade West on the outside corner, and that's his fourth strike in a row. One away here in the top of the fifth. No balls on two strikes. Swing and a miss, and that's strikeout number two to uh, Dale Mack. Swing and a miss again as we're in the top of the fifth inning here. Toth at the plate. Outside corner, no balls and two strikes. Struck out the first two batters, and he's pretty close to getting a third here to start the fifth. Trojans with a 15-3 lead on a cold night at Cavalier Field. And 1-2-3 they go. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Trojans lead it 15-3. We'll be back after this timeout. I am Lester Miller, and if you've been in an accident or hurt on the job, I want to work for you. My office is right across the street from the Bibb County Courthouse, and it doesn't end there. 
Middle Georgia is my home. I graduated from high school here, college, and Mercer Law School. My family goes to church here. My kids go to school here. I work hard for my community, and when you need an attorney, I will personally take your call. Thanks, Lester. And I will work hard for you, too. Contact Lester Miller today for your free consultation. Wheezing, itching, runny nose and coughing, all these symptoms can be caused by allergies, which are very common in Middle Georgia. Airborne allergens can make it difficult to enjoy life around here, like tailgating or attending a ball game. Even that seasonal cold might be due to allergies. Give us a chance to fix that. It's what we do. With multiple locations in and around Macon, we help children and adults with allergies and asthma. We've teamed with Mercer, and we'd be happy to team with you. Go Bears! All right, welcome back. I'm John Cosetter, and we're here for the bottom of the fifth. And Carter Fink still on the mound, as far as I can see. And this will be Micah Hathaway leading the inning off. Ground ball, shortstop, Morse fields and throws. And we've got one quick out. And it looks like Gavin Whitfield's playing first base now. Tatnell subbing a little bit. And this is Cade West coming up to bat. And I'll tell you what, I got up for about three minutes and I am frozen again. That is no lie. Can't lie, I'm hoping for a quick inning. It's 15 to three. Mount of Sales would have to score three here to keep this thing going. I'm not sure even they want to do that right now. Look like a pretty good pitch, but it's called high. And it's two balls and no strikes. Joey Hiller wants to see strikes right now. And there you go, good curveball for a strike. You can almost hear that shiver in my voice right now. I'm trying not to. And Carter goes three and one to Cade West. Ground ball to shortstop. Miles Morse fields and throws. And that's the second out of the inning. And that brings up Clay Murphy. And we're now one out away from this cold weather game being over in Tattnall Square moving to 7-0. And that's a quick strike. Carter Fink looking good. First appearance of the year on the mound. And a quick second strike. And a beautiful curveball ends that inning. Carter Fink looked dominating. And that's five innings and it's 15 to three. And I'm hoping to see players go out and shake hands. I think we're starting to see it. So that'll be the ball game here. Remember, this is a non-region game. Does not count even though they're in the same region. It doesn't count as a region game. Tattnall Square going to take a 15-3 win. And we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with the closing word in just a minute.
Hey folks, Russell from Gridiron Game of the Week. When you get ready to buy a new car or a newer automobile, there's always the dilemma of what to do with your current car. Well, that's where You Park Em, You Sell Em at 3306 Bonville Avenue comes in. You Park Em, You Sell Em is the original automobile dealership with the owner in mind. For 18 years, You Park Em, You Sell Em has been the only alternative to giving your car to a local dealer on a trade-in or trying to market your car yourself. So when you get ready to sell your old car, give them a call today at 254-6310. That's You Park Em, You Sell Em, 3306. Bonville Avenue. All right, welcome back to Mount the Sales Academy baseball field. Tattnall Square, an impressive 15 to 3 win. They are now 6 and 0. Excuse me, they're 7 and 0 now. While Mount the Sales drops to 7 and 4 on the year. I'm sure it'll be much closer when their regular seat, when their um, region game plays later in the year. Both have shown that they're pretty good baseball teams. Tonight it was Tattnall Square's night as they adapted to the cold a little bit better than Mount to Sales. Bo Hatcher gave a strong pitching performance, and Carter Fink finished it up. So we're going to get out of here on a cold and windy night from Mount to Sales Academy. Your final score, Tattnall Square, 15 Mount to Sales 3. I'm John Kosader along with Russell Deese. We'll see you next time.